the question I get asked the most. The question I get asked the most by far is not how do we design, do we use architects or not? Where do you do your hair? Where do I do my hair? Why did I shave my beard? None of that. The, the biggest question I get is how did you guys get into this business and how can I get into it basically? Because everybody thinks this is their dream job. Um, might be a bit cocky to say that, but no, I, you don't just become an engineer the day that you decide to become an engineer. There's a that's probably true. There's a set of steps that you have to follow to become that person. We don't have to really be an engineer to do this yeah. job, and it doesn't need the same paperwork. Yeah, but there is steps to it, and there is a, a method. A, a method. A, that, that, I, that I, I think, and 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 with that in account, to flip property. You don't have to follow this exact route. Um, it doesn't have to be exactly what we did. But I think that yeah. the way we did it fits in the mold to become what we, we learned doing what we did. Yes. Needing to know what we know now. Yes. Um, uh, Warren Buffett says, um, invest time before you invest money. A lot of times I speak to people and you've heard and you hear, I've done one flip house. <laughs> That's normally because it didn't work well, yeah. didn't make money. And yeah. we've also done projects where we made zero money or made very little money or actually cost us a bit. We don't really know. Luckily, it was deep enough into the process that it didn't sink Luckily us Luckily for us, we had more time than money. So we rather yes, invested the time. The time, yeah. So just to give you guys a bit of a background, we, um, I, I started, I came to Pretoria to study. And um, I, I stayed in a flat and then another garden flat. And then um, at that stage, I was second here. And my dad... That was 2008, 2009. 2008, yes. 2008, right on the financial crash <laughs> of property and, and when everything went really bad for property. Uh, my dad actually at that stage, after seeing me move around and paying for my studies or paying for my accommodation while studying... Um, so, so, so just some backtrack, I've always been a little bit entrepreneurial and, and I say entrepreneurial as if it's trendy, it's not a that, bit of a I wanted money, smose, yeah. bit of a smose entrepreneur. But, but, but I wanted Selling money, activity. I wanted to buy stuff that I couldn't afford, so we did stuff. I remember even we, uh, as a bunch of friends, we, when the government was striking and didn't do dustbins, I got a friend to bring his bucky and we literally emptied dustbins, I don't know if you know this. On our second year, we, you were in, at holiday, on holiday and mm. you came with us once, I think. But yeah. we emptied dustbins and charged people like 50 rand. And we had a t-shirt company, the mandatory t-shirt company you obviously have to have if you think you're a startup entrepreneur. But so back, in, back to 2008, my dad said at this stage he's paying accommodation for me. And he knew you were coming in, what was it, two years? Hopefully. <laughs> he was planning on... <laughs> My mom planned on you coming to study in 2010, well. right? In 20, 2010, I would finish matric. Matric, so 2011. So All went well. <laughs> yeah, at that stage. Yes. <laughs> well, so they thought. Um, so we then, uh, my dad then said, it's maybe better for him to buy a house as an investment property where I can live and then late. They actually liked coming to Pretoria because we grew up in Secunda, not much to do in Secunda. So they liked coming for weekends. So at that stage, I, he bought a house. I was staying in the house and they would come over weekends every now and then. And, and, and his plan was that at some stage you would come and study here as well. So he'd be paying one investment property instead of own a house rather than renting two properties uh, two flats yes. you know for his kids and having it cost more or less the same yes. so then he told me i must start looking for a property so i went and looked at a bunch of properties I th i'm sure the estate agents thought oh it's some spoiled rich brat or whatever so this his was, dad this wants was to buy something 2009 my dad didn't buy this house for me it was an investment for him so we then started looking at, pro well, I started looking at properties and eventually I found a really bad, like a fraud property because it was cheap enough. Initially we looked at, should it be a two bedroom flat? Should it be a house? All of that. And 
eventually I looked at it and then brought my dad to come and have a look at it as well and he bought it but um, I was filling out some contracts on his behalf at that stage and I saw the commission that the agent was making and uh, being a bit of a smoke. Those, those dollar signs in your eyes. Yeah, yeah. I literally <laughs> saw Flip It. We, so at that stage we did a massive t-shirt deal just before this and my share of it I think was 60,000 Rand. So on the 60,000 Rand I thought I'm going to retire. Um, we were eating out and buying clothes and like doing a lot of things that... Retire for two months. Yeah, yeah. I retired for two months, <laughs> maybe for three as a student. And, um, and I saw the agent also, the agent made 80,000 Rand on this commission. And I thought, this is crazy. I just worked for well, four months. Well, that agent probably showed you a bunch of properties and you were, uh, this isn't good enough. This exactly. I was probably really difficult. Yes. And, so and they worked for that 60,000. No, they definitely uh, 80, did. 000. I thought, wow, this is easy money. Yeah. It's not. Don't become an agent because it's easy money. It's not. Um, that, so, so, but at that stage, I then said, wow, screw this t-shirt thing. I'm going to become a real estate agent. So I was a 20 year old, didn't know Pretoria, um, joined but up. Were, you were willing to hustle, you were willing to learn it, well, you were willing to put in the time. I think in the first year I sold one house while being a student. So I wore like a suit. Another, another three months <laughs> retirement. Exactly. <laughs> You're working. Yes. So, so I, was, I was studying BCom. So as you know, BCom kind of BCom van self, I think, supposed to. It was only just that I made it. <laughs> it was like a couple of 50s and, 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 and 49s, which turned into 50s and so on during studies. But so I was an estate agent while studying. And I remember I had a diary. There wasn't iPads, iPads, even iPhones were really new. So um, I wrote in my diary just meeting and and that was class. <laughs> so some of them I went, some of them I didn't. So that when you uh, open it in front of a client, a client it looked like they happened Didn't something. say um, <laughs> marketing to or, or something like that, you know, at least look a bit professional. So I was wearing a suit, the company, I worked for England Focus, which is an international big real estate firm, one of the biggest in Europe. And they had a, a thing where you have to wear a suit daily. At least they called it a summer suit, so you didn't have to wear a tie. But a suit. You should have joined uh, Sonop. Sonop. Yeah, the, I basically <laughs> could. So the, the race house, the, the and then you could wear your suit to, to class, class and, and to work. Well, I did wear my suit to class, and I think they it was kind they of. Probably they probably just thought Sonop. I was in Sonop. So, so I was uh, working as a real estate agent from 2008 for four years uh, in Moraleta Park and in Woodhill a little bit. I don't think I ever sold a Woodhill property. I only sold. Like that would have, one that a, commission would have made a year's retirement. A, a, a year's retirement. But so in theory, um, I was working as a real estate agent while studying. At that stage, you came to Pretoria then, so two was, years later was down the line. 2011 or so. Yes. That's when I finished school in Secunda. Couldn't wait to get out of there uh, mm. because I, I seemed wanted fun to, in Pretoria. Uh, yeah, it seemed fun, <laughs> like the city life. I mean, I went back so so many times. It was. It was like normal studies, but I actually and you were a drummer here. at that stage. I was a drummer. That was the passion. I, yes, the passion and the, <laughs> the idea was... The band's going to make it big. Yes, the band's going to make it big. <laughs> yeah. So I took uh, basically a gap year, which I then decided to, to study music to get uh, a bit of accreditation for what I've been doing for 10 years. <laughs> <For> music. <laughs> yes. Because yeah. the, the, the degree in music is going to make the band big, right? Yes. <laughs> you can show <coughs> a, a grade at the at the entrance you pay 10 rand more yes exactly and yeah. um, so I did that for a year and I started working at Virgin Active or something a like personal that. personal trainer right yeah uh, the getting money for spending your time is a lot Same better thing. than getting knowledge for spending your time yeah so that that's what I did there it seemed better it seemed better because you got a little bit more than pocket money yes, while working yes. as a personal trainer um, so, but I, I finished those studies and on that gap year is when I decided I wanted to do either architecture or construction management. And you, I didn't get in for architecture. So architecture was a bit tough. Construction <laughs> management it was. It was yeah. <laughs> so, so, I wasn't really cut out to be a student either. Just, just the, the partying <laughs> part. For, <laughs> you, were, you were partying way too hard to be a student full time. Yes. So and it was too expensive. 
I remember too, even too many of my time. I, exactly. Too much and of my time. Too much of the training, the time you could make some money while personal training yeah. and doing stuff like that. So I started studying in 2012 and that was construction management, construction management. At, at Tux. And uh, it was quite a lot more difficult than I thought. <laughs> um, yeah, it's most easy. You just put a few bricks on to one another, yeah, a little bit about how plumbing. Can it be? The average plumber, you think, oh, how it, difficult could that be? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if they did uh, become co uh, BAC construction, though. <laughs> they didn't. They didn't. I know, now I know why. Because yeah, yeah. It's basically impossible. Um, but then the, at that stage, we started doing a bit of renting. Uh, renting out. Well, that was when I moved out. I got married yes, quite young. But that was young. basically when I moved in, you moved out. We lived and together, together was, for what, like six months or something. That was uh, about long enough. I think in October I got married and I think till uh, from January till October we yes. lived together and yes. then I moved out um, into a townhouse with my yes. wife at that stage. At this stage, I actually went back to marketing. I said, I studied Beacon Marketing and I then said, I want to do what I studied. Um, and I went to work for a small, real, uh, small ad agency. And um, we were, I, I still had this property thing in my mind, but I kind of left it and it was kind of, kind of difficult. And I said, I wanna go back to studying what I, uh, doing what I studied. And at that stage, a few of your friends moved in, into yes. this house that we- Yeah, so I didn't wanna stay alone. So I, I invited some of my friends over to, <laughs> To come and rent did, uh, rooms. Did, did you pay the rent to our father? Or, or of course, yes. Oh, just yes. asking. No, the, the <laughs> rent paid the mortgage of the house. Yes. Um, and it was at that stage that we decided this might be uh, something that we can scale. And yes. it might be a, a business plan to, yeah. to, to, to rent to start out rooms. residential renting. Like commune. Yeah. Yes. And it was at that stage that you began began looking for houses again yeah so we um at that stage me and my wife was living in a in a state in a townhouse lovely little small cottage type of style place and you were living in the in the in the house with the, the house, yes. um that's on top of the hill in Garsfontein. it's a beautiful little house we'll show you some pictures so as I we think go it's along. actually on the market now i think it's sold it yeah. is sold again now but so that that became our first flip. Flip number one. But we'll one. get to that. Yeah, we'll get to that. So, so we then um, moved into, uh, well, then we said, okay, we're going to buy a commune. My wife was staying in a commune before we got married. It seemed, again, like a good business. <laughs> That's normally how these things work. It seems like you can make easy money off of it, yeah. but it never works like that, that exactly. So we then said, I, I said to my parents again, look, you're renting this place to Larue's friends now. Let's rent it to somebody else. I have a lot of friends. Yeah, he's got Let's get a lot of friends. Them. Let's get more bigger place and a, a more bigger place, more place that is bigger. <laughs> Anyways, so then we, then then I said also as part of this, me and my wife will move into the commune, into like a flat in the commune, out of our nice little estate home into this place and and Just to keep an eye yeah to keep an eye over them and 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 our deal at that stage with was uh with our parents that we'd own 50 percent and they'd own 15 own 15 percent uh, 50 percent and um we do all the work we do all the work they give the and, and they and give the, the loan yeah and and the renovation budget because yeah. we knew we wouldn't buy something that's good so that was essentially our very first renovation project. This other little house we painted a bit and stuff, but it wasn't yeah. really renovation. And that was with no knowledge at all. We <laughs> we actually got a builder. Yeah. We overpaid for for what we did. So so for this renovation, I actually ended up testifying against the plumber because he hit the carpenter with a pipe. So I had to go to court and testify against him and tell the judge actually what Crazy happened. Crazy things happen. So. It was complete in inexperience. It, we so we ended up buying quite a big house, uh, but it was, it was quite 500 cheap. Squares. The guy was shot in the house. That yes. was why it was well in the garage. That is that is a reason to get a house for a good, good <laughs> a price. A good good way to buy a house for cheap. The guy was shot in the garage, 
he didn't die, he made it, but um, they wanted to get out of the Needless south. Needless to say, they wanted to move. Yeah, they wanted to move, and we said, that's fine, you can paint over that type of stuff. <laughs> and, and, oh goodness. <laughs> so we bought this massive property, I think it was 400 square meters, 500 square meters of building, and we got into our first renovation project um, yesterday, uh, over the weekend, when I was sorting out my um, study, I found a little booklet of our like to-do lists. And even looking at that, it's so stupid, the types of things we saw as important. And I th I'm probably sure we spent double what we needed to there. Of course, yeah. Because um, yeah. we had tiling it's redone. Just an and, and that happens <coughs> every day when a person buys his first flip house. Yes, definitely. They overspend because you don't know what to pay for what. And, and at the end, when you see everything that you still have to pay for, you just, you know now, just see, I didn't have to pay that much for that tile or that much for that tapware or so on. Yes. And you only see it at the end. Yes, we were shopping And the for problem stuff is sometimes you make that mistake again. Yes, we, we've made it we've multiple made it, times. We've made it a lot. So um, we bought the, the commune and um, eventually we renovated it. I think we spent like a million bucks in renovation. Luckily, by accident, we bought it in, a, in an up-and-coming area. Um, oh, that was in Hazelwood? It was the only one we could afford. I, would li I, I liked the idea of being in the Old East. And it was literally the cheapest house we could find in the Old East because the guy was shot there. <laughs> we, um, we, we, didn't, didn't, we didn't no. organize the shooting. Oh, <laughs> shoot. no, no. <laughs> that had nothing to do with us. No. But so this house was bad. It was old carpets, old flooring, everything was Total bad on renovation. it. And we bought it for, I think, 1.4 million. Yes. And we spent 900,000 or so on it. Yeah. So we spent way too and much we, money on yeah, it. Yeah, but we had a good cash flow machine. Yes. Um, and we there had was what, tenants? five rooms and three flats. Yes. Completely illegal. We always well, had tenants because we, we, we did it up properly, we did yes. it modern. And we included we, Wi-Fi and cleaning and yes. it was quite a nice setup. I would have liked to have lived there while, while I was a student. Yeah, <laughs> it was a really but, nice spot, um, which we then stayed for about a year or two. Three. Uh, 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 no, stayed. Till, till yes. we decided, let's do, let's do another one. Oh yes. Then we started looking it again for the good because we one. had good yes. rentals. So all of these were renting out rooms and then outbuildings we converted into flats. We didn't add any new dodgy structures or so um, was, Zozo was same, houses and renting those floor plan. Um, Yeah, we kept the same floor plan which is grey area. Kind of illegal, not mm. really kind of a grey area. In, in the old east you find a lot of these tile communes. Yes. So we then started saying, You just hope you don't buy a house next to them. E exactly. your small family. Exactly. Yeah. New, baby. new family with a baby. Exactly. Because yes. they party and that type of thing. But so then we wanted to, to do another one and we found a, a, a stand again in Linwood with two houses on one stand. Apparently, according to the seller, everything was ready to be subdivided we later find out that it wasn't. So we That's decided... That's where due diligence comes in. Yes. You have to <laughs> check out that what people say actually is as they say. It's true. So we then um, wanted to turn this into more of a commune and my dad at that stage said, wait a minute, and it was bad. So we, just an example, we got into the one house, uh, into the one bedroom, and as I opened the door, there was a guy laying sleeping on the base of the bed so no mattress his mattress was in front his he didn't have curtains so his mattress was in front of the window it was like 10 in the morning so the sun was shining in there and he was sleeping on the base till this day i can't understand why I didn't just put the base in front of the window and <laughs> sleep on the mattress maybe but just close his eyes and <laughs> and there was there was stuff lying everywhere on this yeah, floor no, and it, it was had a smell and all of the right things for a flip i think it was five or six rooms and then five bathrooms next to each other. Like a real yeah. Corsais type yeah. of art. So we then, um, my dad then said, wait a minute, there's two houses here. Let's fix them up and sell them separately. Yeah. Again, seemed like a good idea at first. Um, fast and easy. Fast and easy money, quick way to make some cash. That did not work out like we planned. Um, it ended up, so there was a approval, but it wasn't, completely approved you still had to tick a few boxes and spend a few we had to do everything few hundred thousand rand we almost did everything yeah no. this guy did about four months of work 
we still needed to we do a year's worth of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. <laughs> actually built the building, but yeah. it wasn't on plan or anything. So we ended up having to make this a legal structure to be able to sell it separately. It took us about a year, but we did make some money of it. But what we did is we renovated the front house. Yes, quickly. Separated the two, sold the front house. Then yes. we rented out the back property while we were busy with the paperwork. And again, I thought at this stage, I can save some money by doing the subdivision, basically running it to council myself. And at this stage, I was becoming a real estate agent again. We ended, I ended the career as an ad agency and I was working as a, I started up my own real estate agency with the two partners. So we were, I said, I have some time. I do real estate for a living. Um, so it's fine, I can do this. Uh, it was not a good idea to get professionals for that time. Yeah, with most things like that, if, if you have time, it doesn't mean you can fix your own car. Exactly. You're not a mechanic, you can actually you make it worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we ended up um, doing that project for about a year, maybe a year and two months. But eventually we sold and we did make some profit off of that. Yes. At this stage, you were second or third year? Yeah, I was second. End of between, second year, between, between them. second and third. But <coughs> I enjoyed that side way too much. Compared to, you mean the 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 renovation side? Yes. And, and you I made money while I your friends money. were waitering and <laughs> making no, very, very little money. Yeah. Um, so at that stage, I think I was maybe spending a little too much time there and not spending time with studies at so all. So you had, you had three parts to your life at that stage, renovation, studies, and partying. Yes. And you were spending time on partying and renovations, but yes. not so much on studies. Yes. So you started so, missing a few classes. Yeah, that didn't work out well for <laughs> me. They, they later on asked me to rather leave. And I'm, I'm pulling down the, the pass rate. I remember your, my, our mom, at that stage still said, no, we can make a plan, get you into Bloemfontein Coffees, yeah, this something like and that. that, trying to wing a few things. You already knew you're not going to no, no, uh, <laughs> Again, and, you were making we, money we, as a student without a degree. We've spoken about this uh, a lot of times, and I think that is how it should have turned out, because if I did have a degree, you maybe at a tough got time, a job. yeah, I would have just Fell and into and a job. got the golden handcuffs and yes. just stayed there because they were paying you too yes. well. Whereas we could pay you much less. Because <laughs> they, 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 they call it burn the boat option. E exactly. We you don't were, have an escape boat. You we, were burning we boats. Yes. <laughs> so, and, but but at, at, it's at that stage that people asked us when we were selling those houses. Yes. People started asking us, um, who did your flooring? Who did... We did the renovation for you guys and, and we decided, listen, I don't even think that was people. true Big Pond style at that stage. No, It was no. actually not great. No, it wasn't average. great, but I think the workmanship was all right. Yes. The design wasn't great. Yes. So people wanted to, to see, listen, uh, who did the job? We don't really want to buy the house, but we want you to work for us. We want, we need we somebody to redo to, our bathroom. Yes, or yes, our, yes, yes. At that stage. And that sounded lucrative at the moment as yes. well. And we thought and this is an easy way to make at money. At that stage, we, um, we knew of a guy who needed a billboard painted, like four meters up. Yes. And orange. So we painted that billboard orange. That billboard is still orange today. I yeah. drive past it almost every day. So one of our we guys, took, we, we took then any took, job. and that was our very first yeah. renovation job, even though it wasn't a full renovation. We, we took any job. And at Anything that stage, that we, we, did, yeah, we did concrete tops for people. We did tiling. We bought another small tiling company. We when, when someone phoned and said, sir, I'm looking for someone who can do yes. this. I said, yes, yes. <laughs> we can. You don't even have to ask. Yeah. <laughs> Just tell us what we must do. And we'll that, figure it out. And, and then we started realizing to make real money, you have to do work for really um, uh, rich clients because it was only them who could really pay real money for it. So we started doing work for the Waterkloofs and the Moekloofs and all of these types of kloofs. And those people are normally the rich people and we started doing a lot for them, but they are also the most difficult yeah. clients. Because um, they yeah. have time on their hands, their, their business is making money so they can Watch give, you the whole day and, and give you trouble for give it. Give you trouble, yeah. So at that stage, already we started knowing we don't want to continue doing this forever. But we, we had a renovations company for about four years, five years? 
Yeah, 2014 Some, to 2018 about. And then I think somewhere halfway through, I was making you do all the work while I was an estate agent. And you said to me, look, at some stage, you're going to have to choose one of these two. Because I was working as a real estate agent and doing construction kind of on the side, like picking up some of the scraps that you couldn't get to. And at that stage, I then said, what do I want to do? Do I want to be a real estate agent, even if it's the best real estate agent? Or do I want to get more into property and renovation projects and, and stuff like this? So I said, OK, I'm going to leave the real estate agency and we'll push forward full time together. And that's about six years ago now I yeah. think at this stage so it was about 2014 15 ish I think about 2016 16 yeah. so at that stage we did and and then we continued doing renovations for people for another three years maybe yeah, running about three sites constantly up until 2018 yes so beginning 2018 we then went back to my dad we said we really hate working for clients or doing renovations for clients we really want to start getting into our own project and that we, we figured out that us giving all the plans ideas and doing all the work for people owning houses we give them maybe the they, they, they pay us say 200,000 rand for a job but we add 500,000 rands worth value. of value yes, yes. So we, I think we realized then we need to be an owner yes. to get the value that to we actually have. make some money. Yes. So at that stage, we then started, um, we went back to my dad. We said, look, maybe we need to, we, we'll make you a deal. At that stage, in this real way first house that my dad bought, he still had it. I rented it out for him. And he then said, uh, uh, we then said, give us the property. Uh, you've pay, he's almost paid it up at that stage. Give us, not give us the property. We'll, we'll call it as if though we're buying it from him, but don't charge us straight away. We'll pay you at the end. And then take 50% of the profit. And we'll do it up and sell it off. So that was our first flip. Um, somebody we know, now a lot of people would think, oh yeah, I don't have a dad with a property. But I spoke to a very rich real estate investor at one stage and I was irritated by this idea. I'm going to my dad and asking him almost a favor, even though it wasn't really a favor. He didn't do much on the house. We did all the work and that was the deal. He it had the property. It was for him. It was really beneficial for him. He made more than the people made with Bitcoin at that stage, yeah. <laughs> so, which was good at that stage as well. So he made real good money off the deal. And, and just to get back to my story, this real estate investor who I spoke to said, don't ever uh, minimize or, or make less the fact that it is your dad. It was a good deal for him and you can and always... He a, he's also a good businessman. He wouldn't want to just he, do an average yeah. deal. He's not one to just go with it because it's our idea. He, yes. He also thought about... What Questioned is our ideas yes. on it and so on. What's and the at, plan? And at that stage, we did our, our first flip property then. So what I just wanted to clarify was everybody who's watching this you have somebody you know who owns a property or somebody who can buy a property that's probably your way in and that's probably the first step in give way more value than you deserve to get back i think yeah. it's a it's a 51 49 approach give the other guy 51 percent and take 49 percent to get into it because we were so tired of expensive clients and difficult clients yeah. at that stage we said we'll do a small deal just to mm. get out of this and 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 but at, at that stage we also we already had the business plan we yes. knew it would work but you have to prove it yes so we proved it with this one property yes and then uh, off to the races i mean then then we could then we could then we bought with the it. second yes. one as soon as that other one sold we bought the house in fairy glen right at this stage yeah that was our second property again learning quite a lot learning not to spend too much and not then to we take too long and I, yeah i think we did that one and which one did we do then edgar no Gert was it but I, I think we're missing one it wasn't the the next one but so in theory we did a few then and then i think we got a little bit cocky and just started buying stuff or or, or urgent because this was all we were doing so the, and still is <laughs> all we are yeah. doing so we needed to pay all our expenses from just this one business so at that stage we just bought two properties and i think we paid too much for them and i think on the one house we basically made no money yeah and i think the reason therefore 
is a lot of the things that people run into when trying to flip houses. Yes. We had a solid deal. We would have made proper money, but the the it took a bit longer. The the buyer didn't get the he didn't get his bank approvals and everything. Uh, he yes. had and then the deal fell prior through. Prior approval, so yes. everything was fine. We would have made a lot of money. Then that fell through, so we stopped. We, we didn't we know it's going to We sold that house three through. times. Yes. Yes, you And right. that's the problem. I mean, everything else was... And, the, and the completely was normal. Good. That always yes. happens. Yes. So that is why it cost us a year on that house and a year where we had to carry the expenses, yes. pay for maintenance, yes. do all of those things. And that's Even though it was a nice house. Yes. And it still is a nice it's house. It's still a nice house. That's something that you don't consider and you don't plan for. But you need to and don't see on TV or yes. on our videos. <laughs> but now we don't have that problem because now yes. we can't buy them fast enough. There's buyers lined up. Yes. If we put it in the market, it's sold. Yes. But we didn't have that at that stage. Yes. So we, we weren't making this type of videos and this type of content. And I think it's time. Um, also, there's a there's a measure of time. learning over time. You and need and and people always ask me, oh, this is nice, the thing that you are doing. I'd like to get into it. They don't see the eight years of real estate agency. They don't see the failed subjects while you are renovating a property, a property on the side. They mm. don't see the, the, the hard work we did for clients. You can't just get into this industry from nothing. I don't no. believe you can. You, you can, but to, you probably will not will cost, be successful. It will cost it you money. Will be, <laughs> it will be a longer learning expensive curve. Expensive learning curve. And because that's when your real estate story starts. Yes. And actually, the, the first flip house... It's not, it's not where you want to start a real estate story. That's somewhere in the don't. middle. You, you want to probably start on somebody else's money. So renovating for somebody else or yeah. selling somebody else's yeah. property. What a lot of people miss also is they think that this is more um, renovation. And it is renovation. 80% of it is probably renovation. But it's or, more design. Or well, it's design, design and purchase. I think it's real estate. Yeah. yeah, there's a big real estate leak that people it's miss. It's the only thing that you the can't buying change. Buying part of it, yeah. the selling part of it. That's quite. That's where you make or lose her money. Yeah. Um, I always say also, anybody can renovate a house to renovate it nicely for cheap. That's the cost effective. And, and to fast. buy the right property for cheap enough, renovate it for cheap enough, do it fast enough, and then sell it fast enough to make some profit. That's difficult. Yeah. And that's why- It's a combination of a lot of aspects. It definitely and the, is. The, the other thing is, we are not experts in all of those aspects. Yet. Yet. Well, or, or we're becoming, but, yes. but we are handling all of those aspects. Yes. We firefighters, we basically see a fire. Oh, there's a new big problem. We're going to lose a lot of money here. Let's try to fix this problem. Let's yeah. try to close down this fire. So what I want to ask Leroux, uh, maybe you can answer this for us. That's basically where we are at this stage. We've done more than 20 properties now. I think 23 yeah. properties at this stage. Where do you think we're going? Well, I we think, know, we, spoke, think, uh, we speak about yeah. this weekly, but I mean, maybe our, tell them. Our core business will probably stay for the next five years or so, house flipping. Yes, definitely. Um, that, that, is, that is our money machine. That is, that is how we down. generate cash. Um, Salary. Yes. Then starting up and continuing from there, we'll, we'll do some long-term things, which we are busy with already. Like renting, so stuff we like buy renting. to hold. And, yeah, and, and rent then, out and to make proper cash flow from yeah. not and then we've considered a, a lot of other things maybe teaching people to do what we do yes there's so a aspect of that we, that, we that are considering exploring. a course in this a course won't teach you to prop to sell property it might give you a few basics oh. we'll eventually do some type of a course maybe a book maybe an online course something like that yeah and, and then just development um, geographically, geographic so we're looking at expanding into the Western Cape and maybe overseas. We're looking at TV show stuff, more of no. this. Um, there's a bunch of things we're looking to, um, but I think the core is, like you said, we need to focus on keeping. We, we still haven't made it, even though I think we're the biggest or one of the biggest flippers in South Africa. We have far not made it every week we speak about we should be sure about this property and what about this thing and can we make do that for cheaper and can we do this more effectively 
Yeah, it's a to, constant, to constant battle continuously to get learn. things bad, better because things are becoming more expensive drastically. Yes. Material, you mean, you mean material steel. And you can't necessarily ask more for, for the house because of yes. it. And I think also it feels to me like more people is getting in, are getting into it. Mm. And even though they don't necessarily stay or succeed they're still taking they, some of our stock yeah stuff we need to buy so i i think i think you're 100 right over the long term we're probably going to continue flipping in pretoria east for another really long while <laughs> and then maybe we'll look at small add-ons to the business over time i think have we covered everything if you have questions about the story ask us below Oh, so that's that's how we came to where we are today and uh, our story is progression uh, progressing day by day i think maybe with my accident and everything it's 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 caused it to warp a bit into something else and which i, I think, think that's which is the a good discussion thing. we already had while you were still in the hospital is maybe this is good in the sense that it's forcing us to take our hands off of it a bit yes and and not not our minds off of it we for a very long time the roof used to jump onto the roof and change a tile and and do stuff like that which wasn't effective um, as effective as it could be we needed to teach people to jump on the roof on his behalf either way whether he was in an accident or not we needed to teach people to go to chamberlains on your behalf whether it was necessary or not even beforehand um, I'm not saying there's a purpose to it, but it forced us into a direction yeah, we, we can, we where can we make are it forced positive. to scale it a bit yeah. and, and, and do stuff like that. So I hope this gives you guys a good background of what it takes to become a property flipper. It's not a quick get into it, make a lot of money. Like we thought about property, property flipping, like I thought about being a real estate agent, like we thought about renovating other people's property. Yeah. We're always um, looking for the next best thing or the, the next best way to become successful yes. or rich or whatever <laughs> successful is for exactly, you. Exactly. Yeah. Um, have our own time. And it will probably be yeah, more that, of our that's own the time. Most, that's the most sought after commodity, I think, is the time. And if we can get some time free, that will, that will be excellent. So I, also I think, think uh, <laughs> like we did with the other guys, we... We want to give some background and, and show you this is not just a, a show and we produce houses. There they go. There they go. We are human. We have normal we stuff going up. on. We, we're yeah. only just getting started. This has yeah. been three and a half years now that we've been flipping full time. We're only getting started. Um, we're planning quite a bit other, of other things. Um, this is also the video we're giving you as week eight of our series at this stage. Next week we are in week nine which is one week before launch of the levels house yes and then week 10 we're going to show you what's happening product. two three days before launch and launch night we'll right? see how hectic it is it will become really crazy in the next two weeks so please keep watching if you would like to see our current story Go to episode one if this is the first video that you're watching. You can watch episode one to episode seven, which shows where we are currently in the last, what's it now, a year? No, it's it's four months, three months that we show. Seven weeks. Seven weeks. Oh, yeah. A bit more. Oh, yeah. Seven weeks, because yeah. it's seven episodes, obviously. Eight weeks. So then we'll get, um, in, in episode nine, we'll show you one week before launch. And in episode 10, stuff's going to get really crazy. A lot of finishes coming, a lot of design work still coming on the videos of this. And like Leroux always says... A lot of nail biting, a lot of... Shouting maybe, shouting, a bit of shouting. Hair pulling. <laughs> hair pulling, beard pulling. Um, we will, we, we want to ask you guys to at this stage, comment below, tell us what you think, ask us if there's questions you want to know, stuff we didn't cover in this video. Um, like the video for the YouTube algorithm, subscribe to the YouTube uh, channel if you'd like to see more of this, uh, share this to friends, share it to WhatsApp, you can share it to Facebook, uh, share it to other people who you think might find this interesting. If there's somebody that you know that you think would like to flip property for a living, tell him to watch this. Tell him to watch our stuff. That's, if, if there was a, I, I Someone read who books, wants to follow us. There's, Just follow this page, you'll see what we're doing. Exactly. There's no books 
that says flipping property in South Africa. I'm going to write the book. But there's nothing in, uh, especially when we started, there was nobody saying how to flip property. There was a lot of US stuff and UK stuff. But nobody who said how to do this in South Africa. Yeah, the problem That's is what it's, we're trying not, to create. it's not as applicable because of rights and taxes and a bunch of other laws that we have in this country. We have a different bunch of laws and it's just different environment. So mm. we want to show you guys how this works. So please subscribe. Please share this video. And we'll we see you, you it. in week nine. In week nine. No beer tasting this week. Thanks for watching. Because it's early. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>